G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and welcome back to Mark's Kitchen. Okay, today I'm going to do a taste test on this sauerkraut that I've been making, or it's, it's been making. Sitting on the kitchen bench, fermenting away, doing its thing, all those good lactobacilli, you know, bacteria, creating a wonderful sour food. Fresh, full of good antioxidants because it's purple as well, but also um, good gut bacteria that we can eat and so not only tastes good, but good for our health. You might have remembered uh, about a few weeks ago, well actually about 20 days ago or 21 days ago, I put a video online uh, about how, to, how I made this. It was, it was tied in with a radio interview uh, that I did on the morning show with Rob Blackmore up on the Sunshine Coast. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link above in that card there and also below in the description. So I made the sauerkraut out of the red rock mammoth cabbages. They can grow quite large. Um, typically they're, you know, they're a normal sized cabbage, but I particularly was interested in making a red or purple type sauerkraut. See how it goes. I have tasted them, sort of, um, but for effect for this video, uh, I got some surprising results and so I decided that I wanted to taste it uh, in front of you guys and give immediate feedback on what I think because there's there's an issue and this sometimes happens when you are fermenting it's rare I rarely come across problems because fermenting is a fairly a fairly easy thing to do but it's not an exact science um, and I know that the one that I've fermented the exact same way mind you in the glass jar on the right which is here compared to the one I've fermented in this German or Czechoslovakian proper sauerkraut crock there's a distinct different taste and I'll talk more about why I think that is or why I don't know uh, in a minute but what I'm also going to do is after I taste it I'm going to bottle them in these jars here. Now I'll, these three jars are recycled all I've done is wash them out with some nice soapy water. You can sterilize them, it's not a bad idea if you do, but uh, because this mix isn't sterilized anyway, I think um, washing them out in good hot soapy water is suffice. And I've got a couple of these mason jars here that I'm going to use. Uh, hopefully I've got enough jars for the sauerkraut, if not I'll go grab some more, I've got some sperries in the cupboard. So that's what we're going to do have a taste and then bottle it up and let's uh, get into it I suppose now this is quite a large, this is a 5 litre crock and instead of an airlock to keep the oxygen from going in and letting and also let cut CO2 out it has a moat around the top okay so let me get this other jar now whenever I'm fermenting the first thing I do when I'm going to have a taste test is smell because that's one of your best senses if it doesn't smell right well then you know it gives you a sign that it might not be any good sounds like sucking eggs but it's really good way to start off with before you start eating things is smelling it so I'm going to smell this one just put that in the sink for now and I've got a food safe plastic bag on top of this and that's just keeping the cabbage below I did have a big cabbage leaf in the top of this jar but I took it out because it was getting some mold on top and I don't know if that's the reason why this has gone funny um, I, I hesitate to say off but a bit funny 
uh, was the actual mould. It was a white mould, you do get that sometimes in ferments, which isn't a bad thing. White mould generally isn't toxic type of thing, but if you have too much mould, it can grow down and, and you know, contaminate your ferment. But anyway, so I've put this plastic thing in, so I'll get rid of that, because that's just keeping the cabbage, the shredded cabbage underneath the juice. All right. So smelling this, I can smell a sour smell, but it has a, 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 a not an overpowering odor, but a, but a little off-putting. It's almost artificial. It's, um, I guess it does smell a little bit like a vodka or a tequila or an alcohol type of smell, but even paint thinners. But I can still smell the cabbage and the way sauerkraut's supposed to be. It's just not 100% right. So it's given me the alarm bells. Now when I smell this one, it's, um, it's sauerkraut as I know it. In fact, it smells really good. It's pleasant to me. And I think that's a key word, pleasant. Does it smell pleasant to you? Does it smell like something you'd like to eat? You can't really see in there. But, um, yeah. It smells sour, sort of vinegary. It makes me salivate. Uh, it's uh, got a nice smell about it. So that's the first thing. All right, now let's um, taste them. All right, I'll dig down a little bit to be fair to this because say the, say the top bit has been contaminated a little bit by some mould or whatever, maybe underneath might be okay. So that's how it looks. Purple in its uh, purple red juice. It doesn't taste too bad. I could get away with it. But there's just something not right. It's got a, a, a just an artificial aftertaste and it's, it's not totally enjoyable. It's all right, you know, but there's something not right about it. And, it's a good point to, you know, it's not an exact science making ferments. And um, at the end of the day, um, whether it's off or not, if it's not tasting to your liking, even after you've left it ferment uh, for a bit longer, say, or um, not as much this next time, say if it's not tasting right for you, well, then it's no point keeping it either. But there could be several things that have gone wrong with it. There might have been too much salt added during the process. Might have been not enough salt. But then again, some you know you can you can theoretically make ferments and sauerkraut without adding salt anyway. Um, but the there might have been a particular type of bacteria in there that's got in, involved in that batch, and it hasn't fermented correctly or as good as it could have. Uh, obviously, through my smelling and taste test, there's something there's something wrong with it, and so I'm going to throw it out. I'm not even going to give it to the chickens. You know, you just got to be honest with yourself and and say, well, this one just hasn't worked for whatever reason. I would say most likely uh, there was a certain bacteria that multiplied more than another one, and it hasn't really got a good balance in there and that balance may never be picked up no matter how long it sits there trying to ferment. Um, I don't think it's the container uh, I, because I've made sauerkraut in that glass container before and it's been fine. I, uh, making it in a glass container as opposed I don't th you know I don't think that crocs are better than glass to be honest um, just because 
this crop turned out better than that one and it's from the same batch. I don't think that's the difference. But anyway, let's see if that's actually correct and let's taste the crock sauerkraut. Now in the crock, instead of that plastic or using glass or using a cabbage leaf to hold the shredded cabbage underneath the juice or the brine or whatever, this has these stones, these discs. I don't want to drip it all over the place but basically that's them there. And they sit in the top. Holds it under. Works really good. Not sure if it's because the crock looks darker or whether it actually is darker but seems that the crowd here is, is a darker appearance than the other one. Let me have a look. No, no it's about the same. About the same. Alright, so like I said this one smells a lot better. Mm. Oh, that is nice. Mmm, that's so Moorish. I could just keep eating this. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So, that just really hits the spot. I'd have to say, that's the best sauerkraut I've ever made. And that's how you can tell it's good. It smells good tastes good to you it probably is good when it comes to these type of ferments I'm not talking about other foods um, or other processes like making alcohol or something like that because you can make alcohol obviously and um, drink poison that tastes all right and kills you but in this case um, making sauerkraut is a pretty safe thing to do as long as you know you don't try to eat something that's obviously putrid and off, um, then it could, could give you some trouble. But if it smells okay and you do a bit of a taste test and it tastes fine, um, it's generally fine. So on the safe side, I could, you know, I'm going to get rid of it to be on the safe side. Um, I'll throw it in the compost. There's no drama there. Let it compost down. Um, but I'm not going to feed it to the chickens and I'm not going to eat it ourselves. Um, I can still smell it, it's spilt especially after trying the good stuff compared to this. It's just not right and I can't tell you why. But look if you've got any suggestions on what the difference might be and why this hasn't developed as good as this one put it in the description below or put it in the comment section below that's that'd be good to know thanks okay so basically I just use some tongs I don't want to get the juice out just yet I'll leave the the juice for last I mean some juice is going to come with it but what I'll do is I'll put the cabbage in first into the jars and then I'll put the juice over the top So the next step after putting all the sauerkraut into the jars and cramming it down as much as possible is to then get the juice out of here, pour it into another container so that I can easily pour it over the sauerkraut in these bottles just so that it covers the sauerkraut and that way this, it, it will keep the sauerkraut nice and fresh and it won't go mouldy or go off. Pour that in. Get every bit of last bit of juice out of this thing and I'm going to not overfill each one just yet and there's a reason for this I'm just going to even out the juice between all these jars and the reason why is because there's not enough juice typically to go around to cover up all the all the jars so what I would do is even out as much as possible the juice, 
try to push it underneath. Store this in the fridge. It'll store best in the fridge and I've kept sauerkraut for 12 months without a problem. In fact, I've kept sauerkraut for two years without a drama. But it's best eaten within 12 months and it's best stored in the fridge because that'll slow down the fermenting process. So there you have it. That's the bottling and the taste test of the sauerkraut done. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Tastes fantastic. Yes, if it dries out a bit, add a little bit of brine to it. That should be fine. Don't overdo it otherwise. Again, you'll change the taste of it. Um, but yeah, you can do that. If it starts to get mouldy, you can scrape that top bit off. You know, take the top inch or so off if you catch it in time obviously. If you just see a little bit of mould on top, that's not a problem, a bit of white mould. Get rid of the top bit and the underneath should be fine. If it gets really mouldy and you've forgotten about it, well then obviously it's contaminated and I wouldn't be eating it. Any questions, put them in the description below. Of course, join our forum, selfsufficientculture.com. I write about making sauerkraut and preserves on our forum and also my blog selfsufficientme.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.